Hi everybody, it's Zelda here. So today's machine is a Brian's Auto Works of Kegworth bullion machine. These were made, or specifically these ones, because they made them on old pennies, which this one was, and they also made them on new pennies in the 70s. Now this would have been made from about 1963 onwards. So let's go and have a look a bit closer of the machine. It has this really lovely cast uh, bullion sign on. Some of them don't come with them uh, because they've lost them in the years. But we're so lucky to have this machine. It has been repainted, I believe, because the original would have had like a yellow fleck here. But this has been um, painted into this kind of like dark wood grain. As many of them were, they were updated, repainted to keep them looking fresh and new. It has these slots here, 2, 3, 4, 8 and 12. And this is where you would take your old penny and it's essentially a roulette wheel machine uh, where you could gamble on either just putting one penny in one of them or I've even seen people line them up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, hoping they're going to get a really good win on payout on them. Uh, but this machine is a clever one and quite often will not pay out constantly because the zeros on the dial here. And I know this because my son did this this morning. He thought it was super clever. You know what teenagers are like. He said, oh, I'm just going to fill all these up with a penny, which is what he did. And he did win once, to be fair. But when he did the same system again, quite cleverly, the machine ended up on zero and he lost all of his five pence pay, uh, his five pence that he'd betted on. So, yeah, so you would put your penny in here. And then your penny would be displayed in these glass windows here. So you know that those were the actual numbers that you'd betted on, essentially. And I just love this, don't you? It's these little details in the castings like Brian's Bullion. It's a really good, solid machine. This I think it's really handsome looking. And I scroll down here. Uh, so, yes, you would see your coin that you would betted here or in any of these. And then you would turn this handle here. And this pointer would spin. Whatever number it landed on, if you had betted that number, you would get your coins back in the coin return here. It basically says the same. Back any numbers, pennies only, then slowly turn handle to operate machine. Back any numbers, pennies only, just in case we hadn't twigged that earlier. <laughs> Now, I don't know why this particular machine, because we bought this a while ago, has got the 12 reinstated. This uh, has the original workings in it, which I'll show you later, or I'll get Chris to show you, because uh, as you probably know, I'm all about the prettiness, and Chris is all about the actual engineering. So if you're here for my point of view, that's great. Those people wanting to know about the engineering and how the mechanics work, stick around for Chris a bit later on. So, yes, this would have been 12, but it looks like they may have taken the clock face and maybe some of them, when, when they went to the new penny, they changed these to, say, two, uh, 10. Um, and a lot of these old machines, if you've seen the new penny ones, they'll have like a little sticker just over this to say step 10. But I think this was done that way and then converted back to the old penny. That is just a guess. Uh, so now I'm just going to... This is obviously where your... Um, coin mech not your coin mech where your um, coins would go after there so if you were the person that owned the um arcade that's where you would empty all your cash out from i'm going to very gracefully stand up now and show you how it works because that's what we're all here for isn't it so i'm going to go for we'll go for most machines always pay out two although that's what they like you to think so i put my penny into two as you can see it's run down here so if anything happens the attendant will know that i put a two in there Oh, let's go on the wild side and go for an eight, shall we? That's an almost certain non-payout, I would say. And again, that's slotted in here. So that's empty, that's empty, that's empty. And those are our bets, basically. Now we're going to turn the handle and see what it lands on. So four. Okay. I didn't win on that, did I? I didn't put four on. This so these machines, considering they're a hundred percent mechanical machines, no electric in them whatsoever. They're just unbelievably accurate, I find. And when you consider their age, 1960s, you know, I mean, how many years ago was that? Years ago. I, I should know. I was born in the 60s and I feel very old. <laughs> so we'll go and um, let's go. Well, we I don't think it'll pay a four out again, but I'm gonna go for 12, 3. Go for three, and there's our coins slotted in. 
templates. And what I love about this machine when we have it out on the Penny Arcade is every age loves it, mainly because it's so simple to understand. You just fill it up and everybody loves turning this handle. I think it must be like a gadget kind of thing where just people just love the feel of it and everything because the castings on it are just beautiful, aren't they? I really love all this kind of like intricacy on it. So here we go. Let's see if we win. <laughs> they're taking the money now this is very interesting because in the early days i used to think oh why isn't it paid out i think of one there but if it's on the line it's a non-payout so just remember that you i think you probably heard the money all fall down so if they, if you were to say well i put money on a 12 and i put money on a, a, a three although this wasn't landing on a three but say it landed between the four and three here the attendant would say, it's on the middle of a line, there's no payout. And he would know what you've paid out because he could see it here. So there's no room to cheat at all, sadly. So we'll have another go. But this time, I'm going to do something clever and fill all the slots up. Let's see how we get on. Because people used to think, oh, this is guaranteed, guaranteed I'm going to win 12 pence here when all I'd put in was five pence, which is the first thought my son had this morning until he realised. So there's all the coins, all slotted in. And there's the thing, the dial, the clock, and here we go again. Now, 2p. So it has won because it's on a 2p, but it's probably thinking, well, I've just spent 5p, so I'm at a loss there. As most people know, when you go into an arcade, the only person that's winning is the arcade owner. You all know it to be true. So I'm going to try that system again. Because I don't know if you like me. I'm really terrible. I just feed mach machines all the time. So you need to subscribe just so I can afford when I go to arcades to be able to fill these machines up. <laughs> So there's all our pennies in again, the full raft, because I'm not very good at betting and I just like to bet everything for a, a pretty good win. So I know I'm going to pretty much win on either of them unless it lands on a line or zero. And it's two. So it still quids in. So essentially, I feel like I've won something, even though really I've lost three pence. But there you go. It's a fantastic machine. What I'm going to do in a minute is call Chris in because, like I say, he's the one that knows all about the gubbins and the kind of cogs and such like. Before I do that, though, I was just going to give you a little bit more history. So I did mention, I don't know if I did actually, but I'm going to re-mention it if I didn't, Drayton Manor. So uh, Brian's Works, they originally owned Drayton Manor Park, where I think most of you know do the Thomas the Tank engines and stuff like that. And they do have scurried away in the back a Brian's Auto Works Museum, which I highly recommend going to. If you love anything Penny Arcade, get yourself over there and have a look. It's quite far to the back of the actual park itself, but it's worth the walk. I can guarantee you that. And you'll see all the original machines there. It's just a nice little plot. It's always quiet in there as well, so you should have no problem at all. And that's the machine. And I'm going to bid you a fond farewell for a minute and get Chris in to show you the back of the machine. There we go. Hope you like the signs as well, because Chris painted those for me. See you soon. So here's Chris, as I promised. He's going to show you all the gubbins inside, which I'm terrible at. So first, here's the cash box. Uh, have we made a lot of money there, Chris? Are we going to have a nice Christmas this year? No, porridge. Um, <laughs> porridge. And as you can see, metal tray, wood front. And it's really good, that, because... Obviously, if you own an arcade, you weren't having to then go round the back, you know, pull the machine down. You could just literally open it, tip it in a bucket, and off you go. And uh, just note that they have two separate keys. One is for the cash box, and one is to open the machine. The key man, as he was, would probably have the one to open the machine, so he could repair it if any coins were stuck. But the owner of the machine would have this one, which opened the cash box. Great. Right, Chris, I'll let you uh, turn it round, shall I? So stupidly, because I don't know this machine very well, because Chris does all like I did say in the early days, I'm the girly side, Chris knows all about the mechs. This is a front opening machine, which is super bad. And here he goes. This would have been so much easier for arcade assistants. And wow, I mean, that is some mechanism. 
and I have absolutely no clue about it at all. So I'm going to let Chris maybe explain a little bit. Does Chris know even? I mean, there's so much going on. So what Chris is going to do now is he'll put a penny in. And I'm going to try and get as tight in as I can so you can see how it works. So there's the teeth with the rocking bar. And there was no payout there, so nothing exciting happened. But actually, while I'm here, I'm going to point out this is the penny tube, which your uh, coins will slide into. And I have a feeling at the back here is the pay. Is that the payout tube, Chris? Or would that no, be? No, well, that's the... where our co the, the actual arcade owner's coins would go. So the non-winners go into there. And obviously that feeds into the base here where the um, coin box would be. Basically, when the payout tube is full like it is now, the coin will slide down there, slide into there. Into and the that would box. be our Christmas dinner. <laughs> as they say i'm just going to show you the very back of this from a flat flush uh, system so the coins going in there you saw there's the teeth rocking on the bar no payout so that will drop straight into the tube there and then if i have a couple more go so i can show the base of this uh, the base of this working because i've done the top a few times for people i think you've all seen the bar and the teeth i'll just hand a couple of i literally only have two pence left and I'm going to show what it looks like at the base. No win there. Do you think you can get one more win? Try it on a 2p like I told everybody before. 2p is always good. Nothing on that either. So Chris has disappeared now and he's put the machine back together again for me. And I'm just going to run down it slowly so you get a really good view of it all. Just excuse the light hitting on it because the winter light's coming in now it's getting a bit more difficult we do have light streams on it to brighten it up and there is the machine in full for you so i hope you've enjoyed that video so that's the brian's bullion we also have a brian's clock and that will be the next on my list of video uh I love all the Brian's machines. Like I said, if you do have a chance, make sure you do go to the Drayton Manor Museum where they've got even rarer ones there, like the windmill, which I would absolutely love to buy. And there you go. Super. I'll see you again soon on our next video. Take care for now. As always, bye.